Hi and welcome to the It Channel Daily Edition and this is an interview with the Asian fusion Miss Dina Yuan. Hi Dina. Hi Mike, how Hi. are you? Hi, good. And uh, you are, you're now in San Francisco, uh, almost midnight, uh, but it, you don't need that kind of sleep uh, being an entrepreneur, I suppose. No, not at all. Three to four hours <laughs> is all we need. That's yeah. right. And you know, the, the older you get, the less uh, sleep that you need. Uh, and that helps being an inter- uh, for, for an entrepreneur, right? Let's uh, find yeah. out. We'll find out soon. <laughs> it's a skill that we, we will actually uh, you know, uh, acquire along the way, somehow. Or born with it, perhaps. <laughs> about your background I mean you you do have quite a varied uh, um, experience in terms of how you're brought up and and your um, uh, technical skills in, in in all that you have learned uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you do the talking uh, ah, with your background you. yeah thank you. so my father uh, is a civil engineer and my mother used to be a concert pianist so I was raised uh, pretty much with the best best of both worlds uh, also required to do uh, both and uh, develop expertise in both very different industries. Um, otherwise, I was not the uh, <laughs> the perfect daughter. Um, so, yeah, we you know my my educational background is in industrial engineering and operations management, but I also studied uh, classical piano pretty much from the moment I could walk until all the way through college and still play now as well. Not as good as I used to be, but still have a passion for it. So, um, you know, my parents were the quintessential, very strict Asian parents, um, uh, like the tiger mom. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they, they raised us to be very disciplined in whatever it was that we chose to undertake. And my father in particular, who is a lifelong on- entrepreneur, instilled in all of us um, siblings to dream big, not be afraid of dreaming big, and to pursue each of those dreams mm-hmm. um, with persistence and never to give up on that. So that's kind of uh, the mantra that I've lived by. Wow. All and, years. Yeah. Well, so, and so you're an industrial engineer, a, a entrepreneur, a, a designer, a, a chef, an author, <laughs> and a musician. Uh, that's that's uh, you know <laughs> that's a lot uh-huh. uh, to to have. I mean, for any person uh, I've I've known, uh, that is pretty impressive. Uh, I know on Thank a CV. You. And h- you. how do you manage uh, to to be? Are you able to to you know uh, practice all of that uh, in what you're doing today? Or I your, am. Mm-hmm. I am definitely. Um, I think it all goes back to what we said about the three or four hours of sleep a night. <laughs> yeah. Um. But the, the engineering I don't do as much um, currently, though the thought process and problem solving that we learn as an engineer obviously applies in any business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these are logical things that um, I think we have an advantage over a lot of other entrepreneurs that might not have mm-hmm. as strong a technical or engineering background mm-hmm. with problem solving. Right. Um, and even the creativity in how to uh, bring a product to market or, uh, you know, again back to the problem solving um, but having expertise in very different fields is a lot about having made a lot of sacrifices throughout life to have that discipline and really work extremely hard at each of those industries um, developing the expertise so when friends are out having fun <laughs> I'm working right. And, and studying, at least back then it was studying, okay. um, and, and still now too, always developing expertise and, and you know, it's it sacrifices to achieve great things. Right. And, and, yeah. and you mentioned that your father was an entrepreneur as well. What he used right. to do? Oh, he owns his own company in engineering and real estate. I see. And, and, mm-hmm. and you, you also followed in the full step and started your first company when you were very young? Um, yes. Well... Technically, my first company was in second grade. Wow. <laughs> Sell- <laughs> selling stickers at a premium price. It was supply and demand. <laughs> right. Did, did any parent come back to you and said that you ripped off their, their kids or whatever? <laughs> oh, you read my mind. Actually, they did. Um, I was actually, well, the story is actually very sweet. I was trying to save up enough money to buy a birthday gift for my father. Ah. And yeah, so I was actually willing to let go of my prize stickers 
at a at a premium, of course, and the other kids would spend their lunch money, which is not my fault. They <laughs> they wanted the stickers, right? Yeah, supply and demand, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's capitalism at its best. <laughs> So unfortunately, the other children's parents came to the school and complained, so they shut down my business. Oh no! But uh, but nonetheless, I had enough revenue to uh, achieve my purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, my first official business was in my later teens, early twenties, in the music industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a brief uh, life in that industry, mm-hmm. trying to achieve. Uh, pop stardom following <laughs> crazy childhood dreams it w- um, but yeah it would have been a different path i'll be interviewing you uh, you know in regards to a different thing today if uh-huh. you have done that right <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> yeah because i do have a music channel as well <laughs> oh you do yes yeah uh, probably not in this lifetime <laughs> 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 but yeah, I had you know it was uh, it was a fun couple of years. Mm-hmm. I had a fair amount of decent success at that time mm-hmm. um, with the first music company that I did, and you know it was a uh, a young girl's dream, and and I'm glad I followed it to the extent that I did, mm-hmm. uh, and and it turned out well. But for personal reasons, I decided to exit the music industry and go on to what I feel are more uh, valuable endeavors at this point. All right. And how does that lead? Uh, how did how did you lead to uh, start the Asian Fusion? Um, well, I grew up in San Francisco. Um, I, well, I traveled back and forth with my parents a lot between all over Asia and the U.S., but a chunk of my childhood was here in San Francisco. And I actually used to get beat up a lot in school for being Asian. Um, <laughs> yeah, being, you know, teacher's pet and being the good student and things like that. And so as a young girl I, in, in America, I actually was not happy with being Asian at that time. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a little blonde girl and, mm-hmm. and be, you know, the all-American girl and have a typical American name Mm. Uh, like Jessica or Jennifer, and you know, I, I was the furthest thing from the typical American girl. Mm-hmm. So I felt like that's why I was getting beat up. Right. And so throughout childhood, even the earlier years in Asia, I didn't really appreciate the cultures that we have. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until later teen years and throughout the twenties when I started heavily traveling in Asia myself. Um, and experiencing all the rich cultures that I suddenly just developed this obsession with mm. every single Asian country and the people, the food, the cultures, history and tradition. And I don't know what it was exactly, any one thing that I cannot pinpoint, mm-hmm. but I just fell in love with it all over again and realized um, like finding, the amazing... Yeah. It's like finding yourself uh, back exactly. in Asia. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then I started traveling in mid-20s through Southeast Asia a lot. I worked a lot with orphanages in Thailand and Cambodia. Mm-hmm. Um, also did rescuing children from prostitution. Wow. Um, and I think that, of all my life experiences, was what changed me the most mm. and helped to develop this obsession with everything Asian. Um, and from there, in the mid to late 20s is when I decided this is what I want to do with my life. I wanted to create a company that celebrated the best of everything in Asia Mm. um, and also eventually give back to those children that I had originally worked with Mm -hmm. that inspired me to create the company in the first place. Right. So tell us a bit about AsianFusion.com. Well, that is just one platform of the entire Asian Fusion company. Um, That is a website that is based... Uh, modeled very closely after Oprah.com. Right. And, of course, everybody knows Oprah. She's done phenomenal things for people around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at her website, it has pretty much everything that has to do with living well. You can find things um, like recipes, you know, travel tips, and, of course, lifestyle, fashion, health, spirit. Um, again, as I said, everything that has to do with living a great life and mm-hmm. bettering yourself. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to do something that was very similar to that as an online platform, but focused on Asian topics and issues. Right. Um, so that's basically what Asian-Fusion.com is right now um, in its beta stage. Mm-hmm. So we're constantly building it to hopefully what will become something as phenomenal as what Oprah has done. Cool. And how how many people do you have running the site or running uh, uh, Asian Fusion? 
it's a very small team right now. I have, you know, a very small team of uh, developers, and I am wearing at any given time ten different hats. <laughs> That's what being an entrepreneur is. Yeah, because you know, again, we're in the beta stage. We're a startup right now、mm-hmm. in in the Bay Area and、uh, bootstrapping things.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's also not the only company I'm running. Right.、Um, yeah, we're in the middle of、um, you know meetings with VCs right now in hopes of getting funding th- from the right team.、Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see how this expands in the next year. But、uh, yeah, we're we're loving every stage of it. Cool. And 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 do you have your writers、uh, based in Asia? Or、uh, you know, from the states and and with with some connections down in Asia, we have writers from all over the world right now.、Mm-hmm. We actually just started bringing on external writers this past two months.、Mm-hmm. We just launched beta about two months ago,、mm-hmm. um, and the site is very large in in size and magnitude, but it's still a work in prog- progress right now. So. Uh, I've actually written quite a few hundred of the articles myself. Wow!、Um, yeah, <laughs> three or four hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just recently brought on a lot of writers from all over Asia. I wanted to give the site a very authentic voice,、um, mm. with especially the travel section, which it's it's different from most travel sections. It's not just giving people tips. On the best travel deals and things like that, it has sections where it's talking about the history and culture of each country, both past, present, and future. So I've got voices from professional journalists all the way to stay-at-home moms in Bangladesh、mm. who are really deeply entrenched in the everyday life there. That you know, most people around the world would not ever hear that voice. Wow. So. Yeah, I wanted to give those voices a chance to speak of what they're doing on a daily basis, but you know, more on a relevant and interesting level that would appeal to a global audience.、Mm, okay, and and looking at、uh, who who would you think that、uh, would be interested in in you know like uh, uh, like publishing in the site, and would they be able to? To、uh, is there a guideline that you're looking at some kind of a, a mantra or some kind of a belief system that you know what type of content they should be publishing and and stuff like that? Well, in regards to writers,、um, obviously I would really prefer people of an Asian background. Though we do have a few writers who are、um, non-Asian, but they have a tremendous passion for Asian topics and issues. And or they have lived in Asia for an extensive amount of time,、mm-hmm. but predominantly for Asian people,、um, you know, you don't have to be a professional writer to be writing with us.、Mm-hmm. Obviously, you've got to have some kind of talent and skill.、Um, but I, I am the general editor of everything. So, the main thing is that we want people who have a profound passion、mm-hmm. for their country. Um, so, for example, if people in Singapore would want to write with us, we're looking for Singaporeans who are、um, not necessarily patriotic in regards to politics, but just really love the Singaporean culture, whether it's from a food and travel perspective, or a more cultural perspective or historic perspective.、Um, the main thing is having passion and being able to voice what your thoughts and concerns are in a logical manner that people can understand. Right, you mentioned that、uh, the Asian Fusion is a、uh, dot com is actually one part of your of the entire、uh, company. What are the、Correct. other aspects of the of the company? Well, what what I'm trying to build here is really a, a multimedia lifestyle brand.、Mm-hmm. Um, and to cite two of my favorite examples, I said Oprah earlier. Another favorite example is Martha Stewart with her、mm-hmm. OmniMedia company. Yep. So as you mentioned, I am a published author. I have、uh, several books. Uh, coming out, one that has just been released already,、mm-hmm. um, and I'm working on a potential TV deal here in the United States as well.、Wow. So my my ultimate goal is to build a global Asian lifestyle brand.、Right. Um, you know, whether it's、uh, we also are working on a frozen food product line,、um, and so whether it's from food or even home decor lines or my personal books. The whole gamut of the company is meant to celebrate everything Asian.、Oh, everything,、wow. yeah, everything that we do has an Asian slant on it. Nice. And、uh, yeah, it's it's paying homage to my roots. <laughs>
it's uh, my people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like uh, internationalization of Asia. In a Correct. Sense. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. and uh, let's move uh, to talk about your books because uh, you mm-hmm. know since you brought it up, uh, you have published uh, one. Uh, or rather, one of the books is available. Uh, uh, in in, uh, what was the book that was available? That uh, you mentioned. It was, yeah, last month, um, my debut Indonesian cookbook was released in Singapore and Malaysia. Oh, okay. Should be at yeah, bookstores across both countries, and uh, the book will be available, I believe, across Asia and Australia sometime this month or early January. Yeah. And and yeah, a global release of the book will be in early March. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's that's mm-hmm. the date I saw. It was more of the March 2012 uh, for the in, uh, the Indonesian uh, cookbook, right? Right, right. That's the March date is for United States and Europe specifically, but right. in Asia it's available earlier. So for you in Singapore, if you uh, march over to the local bookstore, it should be there already. I will go <laughs> look out for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So tell us a bit about the well, why Indonesian food. Is that uh, something you 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 have been intrigued about, or is it just because you love Indonesian food? Well, I love all Asian food. Yep. Um, Pretty equally, but um, <laughs> well, my my publisher is Tuttle Publishing, whose headquarters um, actually are in Singapore. Mm-hmm. Um, so a shout out to Eric right. <laughs> at Tuttle Publishing. Um, they actually uh, were looking at me originally when we got signed to do either Indonesian or Thai or possibly even fusion, mm-hmm. um, which is something that I'm very passionate about. But I had spent a number of my childhood years in Indonesia as well. So it seemed a natural fit since there weren't too many chefs out there doing Indonesian cookbooks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really hasn't had its turn at the global forefront in the culinary world. Right. So if particularly in America, Asian food is extremely popular, of course. But, you know, Chinese has been done for decades already. And if you think about most of the Asian countries, they've had a, a great turn in everybody's mind um, when it comes to food. But Indonesian really hasn't been that famous or popular yet. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like a good time, and, and Tuttle wanted to kind of introduce the world to this more uh, different cuisine. All right. <laughs> so do you spend some time in Indonesia uh, learning about all this food? or? Uh... Well, I spent a number of my childhood years there ah, um, okay. while my parents yeah, were traveling on business. Um, so it was a natural fit. I, I studied quite a bit with both uh, professional chefs in some of the top hotels um, in both private lessons, group lessons, and also in my travels there I studied with a lot of uh, kind of mom and pop restaurant owners, very colloquial type hole in the wall restaurants, very authentic. So I've got kind of the best of both worlds, studying the classical techniques mm-hmm. and the more down home techniques. Right. And right. what what would you think uh, is your favorite uh, in the book? Uh, you know, the, the cuisine that all of us should try, cooking at least. <laughs> to try cooking. That's difficult to pick one. There's different ones. Like there's ones that are favorites for actually cooking, and then there's my favorites for eating. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, which one see. would be for eating and which one would be for cooking? For eating, definitely soto ayam. Do you ah, know what that is? Yes, I know. Yeah, okay, yeah, so I of know. course Singaporeans know Indonesian food very well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorites. I love eating a lot of spicy things in these noodle soups. There's mm. nothing better than that. I love um, I love yeah. gado gado. Do you? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I love yeah. gado gado. Although it's a bit Javanese than than Indonesian. Correct. Yeah, right. but I love gado yeah. gado. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's quite popular. I actually stayed in Jakarta for six months uh, on a work trip before, and uh-huh. yeah, I, I I've like at least have one gado gado a day. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow! Yeah. Really... <laughs> yeah, that that recipe is actually interesting because obviously putting a salad together is very simple and healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, the the recipe for the sauce it's a little more time consuming in in my book because I don't cheat with it. I don't use peanut butter the way a lot of western <laughs> cookbooks have it. Yep. Um I mean it's a very authentic recipe, but the thing is people can make a big batch of it and just mm-hmm. store it in the refrigerator so you can kind of use it whenever you need to and put a fresh salad together. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So I you know, I try to give recipes that were both authentic but easy to follow and doesn't take too much time for people, very busy schedules and whatnot. Hmm. So yeah. you you would think that uh, people without uh, people as busy as me uh, or entrepreneurs <laughs> can actually quickly 
just uh, you know get an oven and or or a pan just to get it up in like fifteen minutes or so just before you leave uh, for work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A fair amount of the recipes can be done in half an hour or less for nice, sure. Nice, nice. Yeah, all right. it's all about organization in the kitchen. Definitely looking out for it. <laughs> Yeah, if anybody has disorganized kitchens, call me. I I'll, do. I'll get it. I'll get it organized. Yeah. yeah. I so. Have a session with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you come down, you know, we might, you know, run a contest to see, you know, a reality show, let's say, yeah, yeah to organize uh, kitchens. Organize Mike's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, tell us a bit of uh, uh, what you have in the future for uh, Asian future. I mean, I think you mentioned a bit, like you know. Uh, uh, packed foods and and you know taking it to the next level of uh, uh of actually uh, delivering asia to the rest of the world uh right. what what would the next immediate thing that you think in the next year or so how, what, what will we see what will we see in asian fusion well the next year or so we're definitely going to be working very very hard at launching um between what we have now as the beta version of the website into a fully produced website with a, a lot more content and um, adding video features as well to uh, you know focus on what's going on in Asia and with um, uh, Asian Americans um, and of course I'll be releasing one possibly two more of my books so it's kind of cross marketing between uh, my personal projects and Asian fusion mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned before I'm working on a potential TV deal mm -hmm. here in the US so we may see something happen with that um, I'm also working on a concept for an Asian entertainment network, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to go into too much right now because yep. that's a uh, kind of in stealth mode. <laughs> but <laughs> cool. uh, yeah, so again, there's going to be continuous unrolling of uh, of new things, new products, and new features, both on the website and in the Asian Fusion Company in general. So. We'll see. We'll All see right. what happens. Great things in store, hopefully. All right. Cool. We're definitely looking forward to it. And uh, when you do come uh, to Singapore, uh, yeah. we would have uh, another live event, hopefully, with you around. For Maybe, sure. Yeah. So I love Singapore. Miss it a lot. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank, and that, that's the show. Uh, do look out for uh, the Asian Fusion, uh, the book called Indonesian Cooking by Dina Yuan. Uh, and look out uh, for the site asian-fusion.com uh, that is in beta right now but you can actually access to all the features that's available right correct yeah correct. and where else can we find you uh, Dina uh, well you can find my personal site at asianfusiongirl.com mm -hmm. and of course following on twitter at asianfusiongirl cool yeah and uh, this is uh, Michael Falk and signing off for uh, the lead channel Daily edition. All right. Thanks, Bye. Mike.